Okay, my special students in MRK 460, January 2021. We're now about to start the fourth week, and I just wanted to give you a chance to catch up and uh, see what stuff we've done and what stuff we haven't done and what we're about to do. So I thought the simplest way to do that would be to just do a screen capture of the web page and then talk about it as we do it. So as you can see here, uh, I've told the students that the way that they can tell that we've talked about something, let's say you missed a class or you want to know what we did or go back over things, is just to look at these little red notes, right? So uh, it says right here, Shopify did, yes, we talked about Shopify, and there's the interview about Shopify, right? Um, talked about using my cell phone number to call me, we did that. Now, sometimes you see the word noted, okay? Noted means I didn't discuss it. I just said, this is something here that you should look at, or this is something you should read. Just like this thing up here. What is global marketing? Noted. Four types of opportunities, because we're going to talk about that a little bit further on. And this bit of an introduction here to the whole course, okay? So I wouldn't repeat what that is, because it's already a video there. So um, last week, uh, we got into the things about... Uh, the six environments and the four P's, which is a bit of a repeat of your MRK 106 course, but many of you were patient and let me fill you in on how to discuss that in more detail. Plus, you observed that we added on the uh, competitive environment and also the geographic environment. And the difference between global marketing and international marketing, and then also this thing about market penetration and market development. And I used the example of the cell phone companies. And then we got into some things about uh, BlackBerry, and there's the newspaper article right here. And we talked about uh, Canada Goose is an example of target market segmentation and how things change over time. And we also talked about GoPro in terms of competition. And then we talked about a very interesting thing about globalization of customers, of production and government. Because most people have heard of the word globalization. They just think it means going international. But I wanted to get in a little bit deeper to it and make sure that you understand that globalization of production means that when you have your stuff made in many different parts around the world, how does that affect you? Well, because the COVID-19 affects you very much because it has to do with physical transportation of things, which are now sometimes halted at the border because of rules and regulations about people being able to move them. Uh, now, in this particular case, we can get a chance to talk about this. The Big Mac Index was just simply a way of having something that you could use to identify all the different economies around the world because we all buy and sell things in a slightly different way. For example, Little tiny oranges at Christmas time are very, very cheap in Japan because that's where they come from. But in North America, they're very, very expensive. But then if you flip things around, gasoline in Japan is very, very expensive. It's cheap in North America because we drill it and pump it out of the ground ourselves. So this is where the Big Mac index came from. What they did was decide that they look at all the different countries around the world and see how much a Big Mac costs and try to compare the economies there. But this now is considered to be out of date. So I challenged my students saying, you know, if the Big Mac index doesn't work, maybe we should switch to something like, well, I don't know, like a Starbucks uh, index or something like that. Anyhow, you can read that on your own. Sustainability, this kind of fits with the geographic environment in terms of not cutting enough, uh, not cutting down too many trees and making sure we don't have, uh, you know, plastic in our water and other things like that. So uh, I didn't get a chance to talk about this in class, but these two videos, this one right here, is very very interesting and it talks about uh, you know pollution and erosion and crop usage and so on so read that on your own okay now um, the other thing too is uh, Canada's top companies in Canada's trade investment this is a little bit out of date but it's useful to read through quickly now this is going to be what we're going to spend most of our time in class on the 26th 27th and 28th about the physical geographic environment so first of all I want to talk about this little picture here of the situation in Switzerland with the steel and the expensive watches. So just read about that little point right there. And then weather extremes. So this is a little unit where we talk about some examples of what happens when you got extreme weather. So this is a class that I used to teach at U of T and I just had the students make four different videos. One was how hot weather affects a business, how cold weather affects a business, how fires and floods affect a business, and storms affect a business. So you could watch each one of those. They're very short, just a minute, and you could earn class participation marks for making comments on them. You could also use those videos as a tip to figure out what you're going to do for your um, video project, which I'll talk about later. Now, this video here, um, this is one I've been using every year in class. This is actually a, 
about a five minute video this is a tv interview that i did 15 years ago 15 years ago but maybe 80 percent of the things i said are still current or things that i predicted that will come about and so it's divided into several different parts so watch the whole video because we're going to talk about it in class as if you watched it in advance so watch it in advance and then what we're going to do is talk about some of the parts of the video for example there's a bunch of things here in weather extremes where I talk in the video about uh, is weather extremes getting worse I also talk about uh, the contingency plan for uh, and also the tyranny of quarterly earnings I'll explain what that phrase means and this video does exactly that I'll also talk about contingency planning because the reason why a lot of companies don't spend money on contingency planning is because they're counting on it not happening and they're having to spend more of their money on marketing so they can make money and the other thing too about the threat of extreme weather cycles uh, and have the ability to change your plans and, and bring on board new promotion scenario. The reason why I mentioned this is because when you graduate and you're looking for a job this is something you can mention in a job interview which will cause you to be considered an outstanding candidate because you understood something important like that. The other thing I put in here was seven trends of successful companies which I wrote in 2011 and now 10 years later I've updated or will update so what you could do is you could look at this list and say um, sir I think this should be changed here or I think that should be changed here or I think you should update this and I will give you class participation marks for making those suggestions so that we can do the 2021 version of this list of seven trends of successful companies in handling weather extremes okay and then the other thing too is talking about the different characteristics of contingency plans and what you plan for um, like flood insurance drains and gutters power backup generators all kinds of things like that and i have a little bit of a discussion about what some of those examples are and the most extreme example of course is this picture at the bottom of the page whether you agree or disagree with global warming that picture is not fake it's real that used to be the glacier now it doesn't exist anymore so kind of an interesting comment so that's all in that section here on on weather extremes right and this is an example of a students uh, in a group was it two years ago or so who made a good video and the graphics in the video the sound everything is a good example of an a video uh, because you're going to be doing something like that then hopefully we'll have some time to talk about contingency planning and i'll talk about what this picture means and the story behind it which turned out to be very very interesting and the one thing also I want to teach you, which I taught in BAM 101, if you had me as a professor, you would know this, but it's about sources of information. What that means is places you get information. So as a student, if the professor says, I want you to do a project, where do you get information? The answer is government sources, trade associations, and corporate web pages. And so if you read this down here and look at the videos, this could be one of the most important, useful things you learn this whole year at Seneca these three places to get information and this one here is my secret weapon trade associations it's a story about me making money by going to Japan and helping a Canadian company sell automotive computer software and the way I did it was to network with the Japanese industry trade association and there's a very interesting story here and how you do that and how you get development money from the government this is also a point about corporate web pages where to get the information on corporate web pages in addition, when we're talking about government, one of the sources of information is embassies, consulates, and high commissions. I was very surprised that very few of my students know what is the difference between an embassy and a consulate or a consulate general. So I have a little page here talking about this and also a video of me describing it. And I used to work at the Department of Foreign Affairs and we'll also talk about uh, traveling overseas and so on. So that's what we plan to do uh, on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday in class. I don't think we're going to get up here to the cultural environment until the following week. So these dates will change from January 26th, 27th to something like February 3rd and 4th. Okay? So I hope that that's helpful and you'll all be prepared to go in class on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope you have a good Monday night.